Excited to see what he's got going ahead of this. Yeah, this should be a great match. A winning in scenario for both Justin Burns and Joseph Ugarte. Winner of this will be 7-0 and, oh, and guaranteed their slot into, uh, into the later rounds tomorrow. So Justin has the Iron Hands and a Ditto on his side, which will Imposter transform into the Landorus on, on Joe's end. It's going to be the only Ditto brought to this one as Joseph has opted to leave his Ditto at home and Justin leading the Ditto to start. I feel like that is such a risky choice because it's always just going to be imposturing whatever is straight ahead of it. So in this case, the Landorus. The Landorus is a great thing to be copying in this case because that could be threatening a heavy ground type attack into the Maridon. So no wonder we're going to be seeing a swap to kick things off. Brigraf, this will bring the Armor Tail. Stop any potential fake out on the horizon as well. Yeah, and with only ground and poison attacks available on the Landers and Carnage, you can imagine Justin's not going to target down the floating Pokemon. So this damage goes right into Brigraf, bring it down to half HP. Iron Hands takes well over half of its HP from that Earth Power on Joe's end. Here's the Volt Switch, that double target working out for Justin because Maridon was in such a bad position that he he effectively knew Joe had to switch it out. You get a free Volt Switch. Let Iron Hands take that uh, take that damage and get your Calyrex on the field for free. This Calyrex is something that can definitely be threatening later on with an attack. And Joe has to be so careful here on out, more so when you're facing off against this Lander SI over on Justin's end of the field. When you have a Ditto, both trainers have Choice Scarf on it. If you're copying the opposing Pokemon, you want to make sure that you're outspeeding with moves of choice. Even if you want to be trying to go for a powerful attack into the Calyrex at this point, it could be super dangerous. So I like seeing a Protect kick it off. Yeah, Landorus will protect on Joe's side, but the Earth Power goes for Frigoreth again. So how much damage it did the prior turns, we know Frigoreth cannot withstand that damage. First KO of the series goes in Burns' favor. It's Glacial Lands. Glacial Lance will not do any damage as Lander is protected, but as long as Joe doesn't terrestrialize out of that four times ice weakness, it's going to be threatening while Calyrex is on the field. This is already, when you're looking at where you'd want to invest the Terra over on Joseph End, when you're facing off against this Ice-type Pokemon, that is definitely going to be something that pressures the Landorus. But when you're also eyeing up this other, this Maridon in the back, that's also going to be taking a hit, or even the Incineroar that's here now, you have to really be prioritizing your pieces. And if you're taking care of the Calyrex at this point, well, this Ditto, this now Landorus Eye, is still threatening a lot of damage. It's something that you also need to be taking care of but it's which damage that you want to go after first. At least with the Calyrex, you do get to outspeed it with these things. Whereas when you're facing down this Choice Scarf, you do know that there is no option to protect. It is going to be locked into this Earth Powers. So it is something you can try and play around. I up the Sands to your Storm. That one is interesting. A way to do a little damage, or even if you're calling a swap to see if the Ditto wants to go into something like a Pokemon in the back. But it'll just be the Calyrex swap in. Yeah, Burns is going to swap out his restricted Pokemon here, he has safety goggles in the stead of the clear amulet, or he has, excuse me, he, has, he does have the clear amulet, so he just wants to uh, preserve it for later. Iron Hands will go into that position, but Fake Out hits the Ditto, aka uh, Ditto Landorus, on his side. Earth Power from Iron Hands, or onto Iron Hands, I should say, is more than enough for the knockout, so. Uh, Burns has lost his first Pokemon there. His Incineroar on Joe's end, I think is, it's a really important Pokemon. It's really in a tough spot when you have a ground type on the other side, but I think it is crucial for Joe. Yeah, and that's why we're seeing a look at the Trasalization going on forward to this. And being able to take the first KO onto the Iron Hands is great. But at the same time, that is just allowing something else to be swapping in for Burns. And now looking at the Amoongus over on the other end. This is something that can be redirecting moves coming out from the Landorus and another way to just try and keep this ditto over on Justin's ends first. And you especially don't want to have it that a Samungus is potentially redirecting hits that are meant for the Cali Calyrex down the road. Now, ditto finally gone. The Landorus Eye Imposter is taking its appearance. It'll be Calyrex coming back out. The Calyrex goes into that slot. I think it's actually important for later on in this match, whenever Ditto comes back, especially if Justin can choose which slot he wants to put it on, because you can either retake over the Landorus and have that super effective damage into Maridon, or take your own Maridon and effectively get a second restricted. That's the fun part about Ditto. It can be whatever you want it to be in still full health. That can be dangerous down the line, but we got to talk about the right here, right now, and that's protect on the Amoongus. The Terrestrialization comes out from the Incineroar, and it's just going to be an attempt at a double up into a protected mushroom. The swap going off freely. 
Incineroar is going to use the Flare Blitz, but into the Protect, so Amoongus will keep itself safe. And now, with the use of Terrestrialization, Joe has two Pokemon that don't appreciate taking Ice Attacks. The question is, will Justin be able to, uh, to get those Glacial Lances off and do that super effective damage? And that's the thing. At least when you are facing off against this Calyrex, it is a little bit slower. And you do have access to a spread damage move. So Redirection won't be able to help you in that case. And now that you've used the Grass tra Trastalization on Incineroar, well, the Powder move coming out from that Mushroom isn't going to be affecting you either. So when you are facing down this Restricted over on Justin's end, you do have the capability of attacking into that. Now, this is where we're going to see the Trastalization coming out from Justin to make sure his Pokemon, it's going to be that Calyrex Ice Rider, is going to be staying potentially safe past this turn, but into the Terra Fire type, even if it's safe from the Flare Blitz, it won't be from a ground type move from Landorus. Yes, it's really important what Joe goes for, seeing his hands across, he knows how nervous, how important this decision is. Amoongus redirecting, Sandseer Storm cannot get redirected. It's a spread attack. Joe does so much damage onto the Calyrex. It doesn't even matter that Calyrex is the fire type and resists the Flare Blitz because the follow-up from Incineroar gets the KO. Justin Burns losing his crucial restricted Pokemon on that turn without out attacking and that is big now bringing justin down to just final two pokemon the mushroom is taking a lot of damage but this is where the ditto the sleepy is going to be coming back out onto the field imposter yet again is going to be going into the landorus choice scarf you do have to make your decision on this turn of what you want to lock into but if it's going to be something like the sludge bomb into the incineroar to deal that super effective damage there well that's going to be utility you lose later down versus the maridon and even super effective the incineroar assault vest takes that so well Half health Amoongus is not able to take the power of Life Orb, Sheer Force, Earth Powers from Joe's Landers. And Burns is down to his final Pokemon here, just this ditto that has transformed and Choice locked itself in. Not even going to be able to survive thanks to the critical hit. So Joe Ugarte winning game one in this. It done. It was done there. But time now, head into game two. Here we are with Iron Hands and the Calyrex Ice Rider on the field. So two of Justin's slower Pokemon to start turn one of game two against Maridon and Incineroar for Joe. Fake out pressure on both ends of the field here with Incineroar and the Iron Hands over on to the other end. And that'll be the terrain as well that is going to be also bringing up the attack of that... <laughs> Sorry, the Iron Hands over on the other end. It's been so long since we've seen it used yeah. so often. <laughs> of course, the speed is in Joe's end and in control here. The Calyrex does have access to go for something like a Trick Room, but you do need to get through this barrage of hits as well. And when Fake Out is over on Joe's end with his Incineroar, that is also something that could be shutting it down. Notably, when you're looking at the Maridon as well, it's not really too threatened on this turn if you are thinking of the Calyrex is just going to be flinched and stopped in its tracks right there. So definitely a way that you can start to immediately put pressure on. Iron Hands feeling very threatened in that slot on Justin's side, so Amoongus will swap onto the field in that position. Yet, a, yet another slow Pokemon, so Justin really showing that he values those trick, trick room or bulkier Pokemon in this matchup. Terra Electric Maridon for Joe Ugarte. Massive amounts of damage. The electric terrain is up. Uh, Hadron Engine as well. This could be a lot of damage. Probably a massive amount of nothing this turn, depending on where it's targeted into, as it's going to be instead Draco Meteor and nothing being done, hitting right into the Protect on that turn. And notably, too, when we are looking at the Mirai on, it is going to be locked into that Choice Specs now at this point. So it will have another opportunity to power off a powerful attack, of course. The Moongus now on the field, it does have the option of Rage Powdering to redirect from that Calyrex. We're right on in this position, gonna stay, gonna swap out, not wanting to stick around. The, there is the ditto. It's not, tra it's not transforming, it's metamorphosized. Metamorphosized it's or whatever. Yeah, I don't know how you say it in <laughs> French, uh, but metamorph instead of ditto. That's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool name there. Going to copy both of those abilities that Calyrex Ice Rider has because it's such a strong Pokemon. And of course, with access to the uh, Ice Attack, might be able to do some pretty solid damage into the opposing Terra Fairy Amoongus. I love that we've gotten to see both trainers bring Ditto to two different battles, how differently it's playing out, and a great swap coming out as it'll be Amoongus going into the Fairy Trasalization with the Rage Powder. So great opportunity to not have that Draco Meteor. 
Now that knockoff does hit the Amoongus. It's, of course, not a lot of damage as a fairy type, but it does get rid of the Covert Cloak. Glacial Lance hitting into both of Joe's Pokemon, but hardly doing any damage. So now it's not like there's Trick Room on the field or anything. This Choice Scarf, uh, this Choice Scarf Calyrex on Joe's side is obviously going to be moving first. Amoongus just getting on out of there, and that is going to be a swap coming out from Justin Zen. <laughs> We're going to see another Ditto. <laughs> this is going to be hitting into that center slot. There's too many imposters out here. What is even yeah. going on? <laughs> and of course, after you go for the imposter, you do get a round of Intimidate. And since it's Choice Scarf for the fake Calyrex over on Joe's end, that is going to be an Intimidate and an attack drop that is going to be sticking on this turn. But Justin did not Thrasilize Calyrex so far like he did in game one to turn into a fire type. So he did take super effective damage, albeit intimidated. Trick Room is finally set up. Justin twisting the dimensions. That Choice Scarf is to Ditto's detriment now. And it's really interesting how then you look at the speeds because you sure you copy all the other stats, but since Ditto's running the Choice Scarf, notably the Ditto Incineroar over on Justin's is going to be faster, so slower in Trick Room. And the same could be said about the Calyrex over on Joe's end. So it's always, you're going to know how the speed tiers are going to be playing out. It's going to be the Calyrex on Justin's end that will get the opportunity to attack first. Incineroar over on Joe's end. The real Incineroar swapping out for the Frigoraph this time around. <laughs> the real Incineroar, please stand <laughs> up. At this point, it's on Joe's bench watching Frigoraph and Calyrex Ditto form. <laughs> on the field. That that did hardly any damage to the free grab, so great swap by Joe, but this intimidated Glacial Lance on Ditto then is just really not doing too much damage. Now Justin gets to U-turn out and then be able to switch his Ditto, transform his Ditto into a more effective Pokemon at the right time. Yeah, that, that's the nice thing about Ditto. Why have just one Pokemon on your team when you can just have basically whatever you want from the pick of what's on your opponent's end of the field? As well, going for the swap at this point is bringing your Amoongus back out in Trick Room, which is inherently just going to be well placed off in a position here. Of course, you do have the Electric Train still on the field, and thanks to the Maridon leading the charge, so it isn't something like a Spore that you'd be firing off, but instead just some chip damage with something like the Pollen Buff, healing up your own Pokemon, and that's what we're gonna see Justin kick off the turn with. Yeah, Calyrex is gonna be way healthier now, thanks to that Pollen Buff or increasing 50%, recovering 50% of its HP. Glacialance still has not gotten a KO onto any Pokemon, so he's not going to be able to boost that attack stat. Glacialance from Joe's Ditto Calyrex is still doing hardly any damage, so uh, as electricity disappears, it means Maradon's going to have to swap back in if he wants to set that up and stop any potential spores. This is where things get a little bit interesting, though, because if you're worried about the Amoongus going for something like a Spore and you bring in that Maridon and it goes for the side Pollen Puff instead, if you're swapping out the Sprigarath that was offering that pressure with that Owl Play, all of a sudden you lose that and the Calyrex gets healed up oh, basically back to full. It gets a significant amount of health back. But if you don't get this right and this Amoongus gets a free Spore, that's not going to look great either. So Sprigarath is going to be taking a leave bringing back the Electric Trade and the Maridon. It also looks like uh, Joe's Ditto's kind of running out of Glacial Lances. So, so <laughs> press play was yellow there, so it's getting a little close. This Ditto's not going to be able to click Glacial Lance forever on Joe's end. Here's the Pollen Puff from Justin on this turn, this uh, the third turn of Trick Room. Healing it back up, Glacial Lance into these two Pokemon. No KOs because Maridon is just an Electric type, no longer super effective. Joe could really use a crit or something to help do more damage, but he doesn't get it. And at this point, too, there should probably be about one more trick turn of trick room left, and you've done good to survive so far. But the thing with Calyrex is if it starts to get, take a KO, then things get really slippery from there on out. And with the choice specs on the Maridon, you don't have the option to protect. So a swap would be the only thing that you're safe to be going for at this point. As well, your own ditto, Calyrex, whatever you want to be calling it, also locked. The damage that you're doing over these turns hasn't necessarily been added, like, doing the most, especially with the Pollen Puff, but it's good, honest work, and swapping that out into something's <laughs> also going to be really dangerous. And Cinnaror coming back out, of course, no Intimidate that's going to be significant here, but it will have options for next turn is Offensive Pollen Puff, is that's going to be taking down that hit. Critical Great hit. Great onto <laughs> Joe! Instead of healing his own Calyrex, Justin decides to knock out that Ditto so he no longer has access to it. Here is a single target Glacial Lance. 
into Joe's Incineroar that does more than you would expect since it's an, in, uh, an ineffective attack. But as the Twisted Dimensions return to normal, the fast Pokemon, Maridon, can start to take over. And this is going to be something where you could hopefully see something thrive a little bit more. You do still have that redirection over on Justin's end. So the Amoongus can take one hit away from the Calyrex, but that's going to be it. And both of these Pokemon do threaten a lot of damage. The Amoongus can normally resist a hit from the Maridon, which is going to be the fastest thing right now quite well. But it's already so low from the consistent damage coming on out. Protect this time around. Is it going to be the double or he's just leaving the Calyrex out to dry? No protect there. But he, he gets rewarded for it as Volt Switch goes into the Amoongus's protect. So Joe's uh, damage there is not going to hit this Calyrex. There's the Flare Blitz. Super effective KO. The horse goes down, but at the same time, you have the Ditto in the back, and you're staring down a slot now with the Maridon over on the opposing end of the field. That is something that you can be stealing, and all of a sudden, with that Choice Scarf, be outspeeding. We know how much damage this Maridon can threaten, so the Ditto and posturing it to come back in to now put this pressure back on. Well, this is something that can be wrecking havoc. Yeah, this is why Ditto is so difficult to deal with because Joe tried to preserve his Maridon the whole match for the perfect time. And Justin said, thank you. This is the perfect time for my Maridon. <laughs> my Maridon now. <laughs> Our Maridon. <laughs> I love that. I mean, yeah, Joe does not want, he, he doesn't want to share. He's going to get his out of there. Would definitely be, it's low enough that it would not be faring well. Neither really this fur graph looking too hot either. Electro Drift instead, that is going to be heading into this Incineroar slot. You just had a sliver of health to be picking off. Going to be no problem there. Yeah, Incineroar goes down. Joe will be down to his final two Pokemon, the Furigrath and Maridon, who's in the back. Moongus designed to pop up offensively yet again into the Furigrath. That's two KOs for this Bloodthirsty Amoongus. This Amoongus? <laughs> yeah, anything you can do, I can do better. You keep talking about this Maridon, I'm going to make it about <laughs> me. Now Maridon over on Joe's end has to join the field yet again, but already about a third of its health, and regardless, the other the other is gonna be out speed in it. Yeah, no surprise to see the towel locked in there. Calyrex is intimidated, or Amoongus that really doesn't do any damage might be tough in this game three. Amoongus and Iron Hands for Justin, Incineroar Maridon for Joe. When we're looking at the Pokemon in the Landorus that Joe decided to leave at home last time. Cool that you don't want Justin to be copying that, but that's also something that pressures into a lot of different things over on Justin's end. So another way that you have to be so careful when there, you know that there's a threat even of a ditto over on the opposing end. No lander to kick things off. It's going to be the Maridon that can be then dealing some offensive pressure into this. Big out for both of our players here. Notably, we're not going to be having the Calyrex start things off. The Mushroom over on the opposing end. The scores are going to be shut down thanks to that electric train. Yeah, that's one of the, the tough parts for Justin. He can't put anything to sleep. But then again, you know, since that is a constant aspect of this match, you can make different decisions and not and not waste a turn on the score. Protect to kick things off. No redirection, nothing. And no fake out. Knowing this Iron Hands can't protect just a hit into it. Yeah, the Iron Hands takes a lot of damage from the Draco Meteor. Flare Blitz follow up. Iron Hands is down. Critical hit not mattering there. The double up of the amount of damage they were going to have would have been enough to KO Iron Hands anyway. But Justin loses his Paradox Pokemon on turn one. And, and Amook is just idly watching by with the Protect. Yeah, last time we saw that it was a attempt hit into the Calyrex that led the field and the next turn that Amoongus trastalizing into the fairy type in the redirection to make sure the Pokemon was safe was great. You are now looking at a negative two special attack for this Maridon. So eyeing up the swap, especially now that there is going to be this um, this restricted over on the other end is nice. This is where things got a little bit weird last time with copying it, especially in Trick Room. You weren't quite favored for the Trick Room situation. We'll have to see if you can put more of the work in this time as the Metamorph comes out and Posture goes off. Yeah, the Metamorph from Ditto, or that's its French name, is going to turn into Calyrex Ice Rider on his end. We saw last time Choice Scarf, Glacial Lance is really not doing as much into the uh, into the Ice types on the other side. But Justin will Terrasalize into Fire Typing here, wants to resist 
the flare blitz that Incineroar might be throwing in its direction. We know Justin loves clicking Trick Room. Might be his best strategy to win this game three. Knockoff gets rid of the clear amulet. That's huge. So Incineroar can lower its stats later. Glacial Landstone, no Trick Room. Instead, does resist the damage into both of Joe's Pokemon. And the Pollen Puff follow-up brings Metamorph down, or ditto, down under half. <laughs> it's just it, so fun to say. It, it, the French shave is so much better. That is a lot of damage hitting into that ditto to be starting things off. No Trick Room. You now have the fastest Calyrex Ice Rider out here. You got a speedy horse on your end, and the knockoff into the Calyrex on the other end. We saw that you had no way of really slowing that Calyrex down in game two, but now the potential for a parting shot, or even just to be hard pivoting in and out here, just have that intimidate, can work out really, really well. You aren't going to be threatening as much damage with the Glacial Lance into something like that Calyrex, which is where things are going to be tough. But if this Amoongus wants to go on the offensive for the attempt at the double up into that slot, well, the Amoongus is going to be taking a lot of damage since that will be a super effective hit. Electric Seed for Agarap, that will be a defense boost to help take this hit. Yeah, the Amoongus does swap out here on this turn because he doesn't really provide too much value. And of course, since you Terrastalize Calyrex, you can no longer get rid uh, or get out of that ice weakness that is facing you down. So Ditto will instead transform into the Ferrigraph on the other side. Here's Ditto's Glacial Lance into both these Pokemon. Does a pretty solid amount to Justin's Ditto. But here's the real Calyrex. Glacial Lance to the other side. Ditto hangs on. Ferrigraph, because of the defense boost as well, doesn't take a lot of damage. And now when you're looking down at the Ferrigraph over on the opposing end of the field and the fake one, and you have your own that has a helping hand boost, you can offer a lot of damage and even just take care of that Pokemon. And if it wants to be swapping into the Amoongus by any chance, well, that Amoongus is not going to appreciate a helping hand Glacial Lance. And looking at this, I'm, I'm trying to like track on the team sheets here, but of course, Justin doesn't actually have a Ferrigraph on his when he has the fake one. <laughs> no protect, his that... moves are Joe's Ferrigraph. Yeah, moves. yeah, we got to look at the other has. sheet. No Protect has to go for the Terra Blast. So he's going to be taking a lot of damage, gets KO'd, and bringing Calyrex over on Justin's end down to a third of a tell. Yeah, so now the now Ditto has three abilities. He's got Transform, he's got Unnerve, and Chilling Nay, <laughs> boosting his attack by one stage. But Justin is able to twist the dimensions. Now for the next four turns, his slower Pokemon will be moving first. That means his Calyrex is, is underspeeding the Choice Scarf Ditto on the other side. And Amoogus, one of the slowest Pokemon in the metagame, he's going to be moving first. You do have the option of swapping out and bringing something that can intimidate back in. This for a graph as well. Uh, it's, it'd be a little hard pressed because if you do get the double up, it could be dangerous. But you could try and reverse the Trick Room on this turn as well because you do have faster Pokemon on your end. And bringing in the Intimidate, you'd hope to survive the double up hit with the Chilling Nate and the Pollen Puff if Justin decides to option attack into your side as opposed to healing up his own Pokemon. Right, remember, these Intimidates will stick because he was able to no knock off the Clear Amulet before. Pollen Puff does not go towards the Calyrex. Instead, it brings Frigoraph down really low. Frigoraph does is going to be knocked out from this Glacial Lance, so now Justin will get his first attack boost thanks to that Chilling Nay ability. But the question is, did he leave his Calyrex too vulnerable at a low HP? Instead of healing it up, went for that double target, which he definitely needed to because the Glacial Lance by itself would not have knocked out Frigoraph. At least you're now just dealing with a... You're, it's, it's not a Calyrex that's going to get out of control since you did have that knockoff to get rid of the clear amulet and you have that intimidate. You're now looking at one that's going to be neutral. You do need to be getting through this trick room, but you have the fake out on this turn. It can stop one of these Pokemon. And again, Amoongus is definitely a very different threat to be talking about in this trick room situation when you do have something like that electric train out on the field here. This is the eye up I think it is. This is definitely a risky one, but hey, we're, we're going for it here in this game three. Yeah, Joe is going for broke, but he also wants to show me the money on this turn. Let's see if this is the money move with Maridon. If it hangs on through Justin's Trick Room Pokemon, this could be massive damage. Discharge does not care about redirection. Obviously, Electric Train is going to be boosting it as well, but Joe understands this is his moment. Okay, he's going to take advantage of it, right? If it will be the Terrestrialization, make sure you drop that Dragon Typing. Since you are in Trick Room, you do need to be getting through a Glacial Lance hit. And it's going to be something to help boost those Discharge. It will be the Protect over onto the Amoongus. Joe is excited about that Protect. We'll see how the turn works out for him. Fist pumping the double Protect on his end. So that means he got Calyrex in without taking damage. 
Well, no, at this point, you're looking at the discharge. Oh, you're burning the, the protect over onto the opposing end of the field. And looking at how little health this Calyrex has, it's something that's going to be taken down. This, talking about KOing your own Pokemon, is going to take it down. This is going to be Incineroar coming back in from the back, bring another round of Intimidate. And now you have Burnt Protect on both of these Pokemon and a valuable turn of Justin's Trick Room. So that essentially means Justin lost out on a free Chilling May boost because Joe knocked out his own Pokemon taking that option away. This multiple times on stream now, we've seen trainers opt to knock out their own Pokemon so that it doesn't benefit their opponent. Two more turns of Trick Room. At this point, you can stop one of these Pokemon in its tracks. Justin could go for something like a double protect here. It does mean that you just have to hit it in the one chance, but it's gonna fail onto the Calyrex. No attempt from the Amoongus, and Calyrex is stopped in its tracks. Now, Pollen Puff is gonna do what it can, and what it can do is not nearly enough as a discharge coming out across the whole entire board. Terra Electric Varidon clears two Pokemon here, his own Incineroar and Justin's Restricted on the other side. So Calyrex Faint, it's one to one, Amoongus versus Maridon right now. He's Choice Specs locked into that Discharge, but now it's single target and Electric Trains on the field, so it's a lot stronger. That's just gonna be the towel thrown in, and that is going to be the Electric Maridon and Joseph Ugarte making his way into day two of our competition. 7-0 record. It